Hi, this is Sylvia of ifrsbox.com and in this video I'm going to show you the basic method applied in the lease accounting under the newest lease standard IFRS 16. So let's take a look to the very simple example now. Let's say that the lessee rents out some car and she will pay four payments of 110,000 currency units in arrears, so at the end of each year. And if the lessee would go to the bank and ask for the loan to buy the same car, the bank will charge 4% per annum. So in other words, this is our incremental borrowing rate. Now let's see what IFRS 16 says. Initially, at the commencement of the lease, the lessee should recognize the right of use asset and the lease liability for all leases. Well, there are some exceptions, but let's focus on this basic stuff here. Here, the lessee does not classify the lease anymore. The right of use asset is calculated as the amount of the lease liability plus lease payments before or on the commencement date, less lease incentives, plus lessee's initial direct costs and initial estimate of the provision for the dismantling costs. And on the other hand, the lease liability is equal to all lease payments not paid at the commencement date, discounted at the present value using the interest rate implicit in the lease, or incremental borrowing rate if the interest rate implicit in the lease is not available. So here we do not care so much about the fair value of an asset itself anymore. Let's take a look back to our example. So first we need to calculate the right of use asset and the lease liability. And there are no other items like payments made before the commencement date or initial direct costs. So in this case, the right of use asset will equal to the lease liability. And we need to calculate the present value of our lease payments to get it. So here, we're going to use the incremental borrowing rate because interest rate implicit in the lease is not available. Why? Well, you can learn more about it in my IFRS kit full of detailed lectures and examples. But for now, let me explain that the interest rate implicit in the lease is that of a lessor, not of a lessee. And thus under IFRS 16, most lessees will have to use the incremental borrowing rate. Now, we can easily calculate the present value of the lease payments using Excel formula PV for present value. So let's type it in. And you can use this formula if the payments are the same in the regular intervals. So the rate is 4% being the incremental borrowing rate. NPER is the number of regular payments, which is 4. PMT is the amount of one payment, which is 110,000. FV is the future value, which is 0. And type is 0 because the payments are made at the end of the period. The result is 399288 and this is our lease liability and the right of use asset at the commencement of the lease. The journal entry is to debit right of use asset and credit lease liability with 399288. Now after the commencement date, the lessee must take care about the right of use asset and here the most common journal entry is to debit depreciation expense in profit or loss and credit right of use asset, accumulated depreciation account. And that's the application of cost model under IS 16. But you can also apply other models too. And with regard to a lease liability, the lessee needs to account for interest on the lease liability using the constant periodic interest rate, which is our incremental borrowing rate in this case. So you debit profit or loss, interest and credit lease liability. Plus, lessee needs to reduce the lease liability by the payments made. So the entry is to debit lease liability and credit cash or bank account. So in our example, we will do these two entries in one. Okay, now let's see. We need to set up a table like here. And in the first column, there are years or periods of our lease term. And in this case, it is four years. And year zero means the commencement of the lease. So in total, we have five dates of cash flows. The second column represents cash flow of the transaction in each period of the lease term. 
And in the lease commencement, it is the present value of the lease payment calculated using incremental borrowing rate. And the substance of this transaction is that the lessee is taking a loan. Yeah, and that's cash in. In the years one to four, cash flows are minus 110,000 being lease payments. Careful about signs. Cash flows are with minus because repayments mean cash out. Then here below I calculated the internal rate of return. The formula is IRR, which is 4%. Yes, exactly the incremental borrowing rate. And using this rate, we can allocate the lease payments between interest and reduction of the lease liability in each period. And in the first year, interest is calculated as 399288, our loan, times 4%. And reduction of the lease liability is calculated as a total payment of 110,000 less interest of 15,972. Ending balance of the lease liability at the end of the year one is 399288 less its reduction in the year one, and that is 305260. And now in the second year, the interest is calculated as 4% times ending balance of the liability from previous period, 305260. So the interest charge in the second year is 12,210. And the reduction of the lease liability is a payment of 110,000 less interest of 12,210, and that is 97,790. And you can continue to do so until the end of our lease term. I'll just copy the formulas. And you can find out that the ending balance of the lease liability at the end of the year four is zero. So let's draft the journal entries at the end of the first year. So we need to take care about two things. Number one, the lease payment. It is split between the payment of the lease liability of 94,028 and the interest of 15,972. And you can see it here in the table. So we debit the lease liability, debit the interest in profit or loss and credit cash. And number two, depreciation of the right of use asset, we can depreciate it straight line over the lease term of four years. And in this case, we debit depreciation on profit or loss and credit accumulated depreciation account. So this was very basic example of the lease accounting under IFRS 16, but there is much more to learn, like various complications, identification of the lease, irregular payments, lease modifications, remeasurements, sale and lease back, and many, many different things. So if you're interested, please check out the IFRS kit on IFRS box and it contains detailed step-by-step -step lectures, just like this one. Thank you for watching. Bye.